Hello. In today's practice lab, I will configure and explain network redundancy, spanning a tree, root bridge, root port, and more. I hope my videos are helpful for those who are seeking to be certified for the Cisco exams. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and share it on your Facebook page and give me the thumb up. And please, let me know if you have any suggestions, comments, or questions. I will gladly answer you back. On my Facebook page, I created a group where I posted all of my labs there. The name of the group, CCNA Free Practice Lab Walkthrough. You need to install Packed Tracer. I posted a video to show you step by step how to download and install Packed Tracer, the latest version 7.3, either in English or Arabic. See my video channel or my group on Facebook and please follow through. On the description of this video, you will find two files, one for the Packed Tracer source files and the documents to walk you through the lab step by step until you finally will be able to verify the configurations you did during this lab. Now we are going to be talking about redundancy. Why is redundancy important in a network? Network redundancy is the process of adding additional instances of network devices and lines of communication to help ensure network availability and decrease the risk of failure along the critical data path. And why do we need redundant switched or bridged topologies? Multiple enabled paths between switch provides physical redundancy in a switched network. This improves the reliability and availability of the network. Having alternate physical paths for data to traverse the network makes it possible for users to access network resources, despite path disruption. And how do you achieve network redundancy? Typically, Network redundancy is achieved through the addition of alternate network paths, which are implemented through redundant standby routers and switches. When the primary path is unavailable, the alternate path can be instantly deployed to ensure minimal downtime and con continuity of network services. Redundancy is in a switched network is accomplished through the use of multiple switches or multiple links between switches. When physical redundancy is introduced into a network, design loops and duplicated frames can happen. How does a network loop happen? A network loop occurs when a network has more than one active path carrying information from the same source to the same destination. The information loops and amplifies itself using the additional path instead of stopping when it reaches its destination. The Spanning Tree Protocol STP was developed as a layer 2 loop avoidance mechanism for redundant links in a switched network. STP ensures that there is only one logical path between all destinations on the network by intentionally blocking redundant paths that could cause a loop. I will explain more and ask this question. What is the spanning tree protocol and how it works? Spanning tree protocol STP is a link management protocol that provides path redundancy while preventing undesirable loops in the network. In an STP environment, the switches exchange information amongst themselves using bridge protocol data units, BPDUs, and will then listen in on all parts for this PPDU message. In today's lab, we will study the results of the show command, show spanning a tree, to have a closer look at the STP election process of the root bridge, and also the port selection process based on cost and priority. And how does Cisco spanning a tree work? How does it work? Spanning a tree protocol implements the 802.1D IEEE algorithm by exchanging BPDUs 
messages with other switches to detect loops and then remove the loop by shutting down selected bridge interfaces. This algorithm guarantees that there is one and only one active path between two network devices. And another question or something we need to know while going through this lab, what is path cost in STP? Path cost is the metric STP uses to calculate the shortest path to elect root port to reach the root bridge. The path cost is based on the speed of the interface of a switch. Now I will start by configuring the switches on this topology. Here we have these three switches. What is the switch on VLAN 1 with these IP addresses as you can see on the topology. I will start with switch 1 here and enable configure terminal. The host name for this is switch SWY. Now for the VLAN 1 and this is with the IP address of 172.16.1.1 and this is with a slash 24 subnet mask and I will enable it with a no shut command. Next I will work on switch 2. Enable configure terminal host name for this guy here is SW2 for the VLAN 1 on this is switch this is with the IP address of 172.16.1.2 with a slash 24 subnet mask and enable it with a no shut command. Then we will work on switch 3. Switch 3, enable configure terminal. The host name for this guy is SW3. And for the VLAN 1 IP address on this switch with the IP address of 172.16.1.3 with slash 24 subnet mask and enable it with a no shut command. Now I will verify what I did so far, nothing major, just configuring the interfaces for VLAN 1 on these switches. From switch 1 I will ping switch 2 and then switch 3 and from here ping 172.16.1.2 and this should be successful and it is and on the keyboard on uh, just the upper arrow click it and then hit enter and it went through now i will try to ping uh, switch three upper arrow again and then with the backspace to change the number two to three for switch three enter and this should be successful as well and it is now from switch 2, I will ping switch 3. Ping 172.16.1.3 should go through. And it did. Next. Now, I will just explain this. What is broadcast domain? Broadcast domain is a logical division of a computer network in which all nodes can reach each other by broadcast at the data link layer. A broadcast domain can be within the same LAN segment or it can be bridged to other LAN segments. Every spanning a tree instance, either switched LAN or broadcast domain, has a switch designated. It has a switch designated as the root bridge. The root bridge serves as a reference point for all spanning a tree calculations to determine which redundant paths to block. Now, what is the root bridge? The root bridge or the switch is a typical bridge at the top of the spanning a tree, just like inverted tree. The branches which uh, the Ethernet connections are then branched out from the root switch, connecting to other switches in the local area network, the LAN. All bridges or switches are assigned a numerical value called bridge priority. <coughs> now, how is root bridge selected? The root bridge is selected by manually configuring its bridge priority to low value. 
32,768 is the default value out of a range from 0 to 61,440. Now, if all switches in a single spanning tree have the same bridge priority, the switch with the lowest MAC address will become the root bridge. Now, what is a root bridge and why do you need to have one? The root bridge election in spanning a tree protocol, redundant links are used to provide backup paths when one link goes down, but redundant link can sometimes cause switching loops. The main purpose of spanning a tree protocol, STP, is to ensure that you do not create loops when you have redundant paths in your network. Now, an election process determines which switch becomes the root bridge. The switch with the lowest bridge identifier, BID, sometimes you call it BID, becomes the root bridge. The BID is made up of a bridge priority value, an extended system ID, and the MAC address of the switch. The priority value can range from 0 to 65,535 and in increments of 4,069, with a default value of 32,768. Across all connected switches, a process of election occurs and the bridge with the lowest bridge ID is elected as the root bridge. A bridge ID is an 8-byte value that consists of 2-byte bridge priority and 6-byte system ID, which is the burn-in MAC address of the switch. Now, what is root ID and bridge ID? The bridge ID is the MAC address of the switch you are on. The root ID is the MAC address of the switch that is the root bridge for that VLAN. So, if the bridge ID and root ID are the same, then you are on the root bridge for that VLAN. I will explain this more again. What is root ID and bridge ID? The bridge ID is the MAC address of the switch you are on. The root ID is the MAC address of the switch that is the root bridge for that VLAN. So, if the bridge ID and root ID are the same, then you are on the root bridge for that VLAN. And I'll show you when I run the show spanning tree command on the switch. Now I will show you how to determine the root bridge in this topology. I will go few, uh, through a few steps first. Now I will deactivate all the ports on the switches. The 24 fast ethernet ports and the 2 gigabit ethernet ports on all the switches. So I'll start with switch 1. Configure Terminal interface range F01 to 24 and the gig bit Ethernet 0, 1 and 2. Shut. Do the same on switch 2. Configure terminal interface range 1 to, t uh, 1 to 24 and 1 and 2 gigabit Ethernet and also shut down. The same on switch 3. Oh, sorry about that. Configure terminal interface range 1 to 24 and 1 and 2. Shut down or shut. Now all the ports on the three switches are not active. Next, I will configure the connected ports on the switches as trunks. On switch 1 we have 4 ports of uh, the fast ethernet 0, 1 to 4 to port 4 are we want to configure these as trunks and the same on switch 2 the same with uh, switch 3. So on switch 1 exit interface range F 0, 1 to 4 switch port mode 
trunk also in this guy here interface range up 0 1 to 4 switch port mode trunk and on switch 3 interface range 0 1 to 4 switch port mode trunk now I will activate only ports F02 and F04 on the three switches. First, I configured the VLAN 1 IP address on the switches. Then I deactivated or shut down all the ports on the switches. Then configured only four ports on each switch as trunk. Now just two two ports on each switch I will activate which is fast ethernet 0 2 and fast ethernet 0 4 so on switch 1 I'll exit from here interface range F02 and F04 uh, no shut the same with switch 2 interface range F02 and F04 no shut and the same on this guy here switch 3 interface range F02 and F04 no shut now uh, extended system ID in which they are used a part of the priority field for a unique instance identifier. In Cisco's implementation, this field is populated with VLAN number the STP or RSTP instance runs in. That is why the command spanning tree extend system ID exists in the first place. Now, if you just wondering, what is extended system ID? It is a value of 1 to 4095 corresponding to respective VLAN participating in STP. The bridge priority increments in blocks of 4096 to allow the system ID extension to squeeze in between each increment. Now if you will ask what are the three components of an STP bridge ID, the three components that are combined to form a bridge ID are bridge priority, extended system ID, and MAC address. Now after I did all of this, I will display the spanning tree information. I'll do that by issuing the command show spanning tree on all three switches. The bridge ID priority is calculated by adding the priority value of the extended system ID. The extended system system ID is always the VLAN number. In our topology, all three switches have equal bridge ID, BID or bid priority value, which is 32,769. How did we get this number, 32,769? This is the default, which is 32,768 plus 1, whereas I said the default priority is 32,768 and the VLAN number which is VLAN number 1. This is how we got the number 32769. Therefore, the switch with the lowest MAC address becomes the root bridge, which is switch number 2 in our example. Now, let me run these commands here. On switch 1, show spanning a tree and end from here. Sorry, show spanning a tree. This is switch 1 and then switch 2 and this guy here is the bridge this bridge is the root and switch number 3 here if I want to put them together here I hope I'll be able to squeeze them together So I'll take this up here as as I said mentioned earlier if you look at this look at this root ID or the here 
this is the MAC address and this is the bridge ID and they are the same this will tell you when you look and see are they are the same you are definitely this is your this bridge is the root here and if you look at the MAC addresses here for switch 2 uh, 0, 0, 005 and for switch 3 0, 0, D which is the D is more than the 0 and on this guy is 0, 0, E so this is our root bridge based on the MAC address now let's go to our root the bridge is the root here uh, the priority as you can see is 32769 how did we get this this is the default 32768 plus the system ID which is 1 this is how we got this number now on switch uh, where is switch 1 here when you look here it's showing us the root ID of 32769 and the MAC address 00E0 and this is our MAC address here for this switch on switch 2 why switch 2 is the root bridge as I told you because of the MAC address is the lowest MAC address they are all have the same priority 32769 uh, 32, 32 1769 and here the same 32769 and because the MAC address of switch 2 is the lowest that's why it is the root the bridge uh, it's the that's the root now if I ask what is a spanning a tree cost spanning a tree uses cost to determine the shortest path to the root bridge the slower the interface the higher the cost is the path with the lowest cost will you will be used to reach the root bridge now from the results we collected from the show command uh, show spanning a tree a switch 2 is the root bridge the root bridge is selected by manually configuring its bridge priority to a low value 32768 is the default value out of a range from 0 to 61440 now if all uh, switches in a single spanning tree have the same bridge priority just like in our example here the switch with the lowest MAC address will become the root bridge that's why switch 2 is our root bridge now the root port is the port on the bridge or the switch with the least spanning tree path cost from the switch to the root bridge this is the root port and the designated port is the port on a local area network LAN segment with the least spanning tree path cost to the root bridge or the root switch now another definition is here a bridge device has two or more ports the one that is connected on the side where the STP root resides is called root port and the port not facing the root but forwarding traffic while lowest cost from another segment is called designated port now what happens to a port that is neither a root port nor a designated port we call this guy here we call it a blocked port it's neither the root port nor the designated port but is part of the redundant links between switches now this port or a blocked port is the one that actually stops the loops so it's just as important as the root or designated a blocked port does not send data it only receives BPDUs bridge port data unit which is like this port here this is the it's alternate and it is a blocked 
Now, what is a designated port? The designated port, I'll do this like this. Designated port is the port that has the lowest path cost on a particular local area network LAN segment. Each segment has a single port that is used to reach the root bridge or root switch called designated port. A root port can never be a designated port. Now based on the results of the show spanning tree commands, which port or which ports are the root ports on the switches? Here let's check the topology and the show commands. Here like we see on switch 2, this is the root bridge in, in, in our topology. Now if we would say why did spanning a tree select this switch as the root bridge? Look at it or at the results for on uh, switch 2. All switches as we notice have the same root bridge priority. The switch with the lowest MAC address will be elected as the root bridge which is here it's uh, our switch 2. Again, switch 2 was chosen because it has the lowest bridge ID, priority value, the extended system ID VLAN, plus the MAC address. Now, which ports are the root ports on the switches? Let's look here, and on switch 3, we have uh, Fast Ethernet 02 as uh, our root port. Now, also, which ports are the designated ports on the switch? On switch 2, we have a uh, fast Ethernet, the designated port, fast Ethernet 2 and 4, these are designated, and on switch 3, fast Ethernet. Four. Now we will ask which ports are the root ports on the switches. Let's go to which ports are the root ports on the switches. As we can see here on switch 1, we have this port, Fast Ethernet 02 is the root port, and on switch 3, we have Fast Ethernet 02 as the root port. Now, which ports are the designated ports on the switch? On switch 2, we have port Fast Ethernet 02 and 4, they are the designated ports, and on switch 3, we have Fast Ethernet 04 as the designated port and in forwarding state. Now, what port is showing as an alternate port and is currently being blocked? If we look here, we have the Fast Ethernet 04 on switch 1 is the alternate port and is blocked. Now, what is an alternate port? An alternate port provides a backup of your own root port. If your root port fails, the alternate port is allowed to immediately transition into a forwarding state and become the new root port. In essence, the alternate port is the one that receives the second best BPDU. Now, why did spanning tree select this port as the non-designated blocked port? The path cost through the switches is the same. So STA selected the path through the switch with the lower BID or bid and blocked the port F04 on the switch with the higher BID. Regularly, the switch with the lowest root path cost will have its port in designated mode. The switch with the highest root path cost will have its port in blocked state. Another explanation or uh, say more. Furthermore, the spanning tree algorithm STA uses the root bridge as a reference point and then determines which ports to block based on path cost. If path costs are equal, then compares the BIDs. The lower number are preferred 
are preferred here. The link between switch 1 and switch 2 has the highest cost to the root bridge, which is switch 2. The path cost through the switches is the same in this example, which is 19. So STA selects the path through the switch with the lowest BID and block the port pass Ethernet 0 4 on switch 1 with the higher BID which is in our example here switch 1. Now the port selection is done based on the port cost. The spanning a tree algorithm STA uses the root bridge as the reference point and then determines which port to block. Based on path cost, the port with the lower path cost is preferred. If port costs are equal, then spanning a tree compares bids. If the bids are equal, then the port priorities are used to break the tie. Lower values are always, always preferred. Now I will show you how I will change the port cost to control which port is blocked by spanning a tree. Now based on our current configuration there will be only one switch that should have a port is blocked by the STP. I will issue the command show spanning a tree on both the non root switches. In our topology spanning a tree is a blocking port F04 on the switch with the highest bit which is switch 1. Now I will do this on switch 1. But unfortunately, yeah, let me run this command first. Show spanning tree. Now we want to change the cost here from 19 to 18. Now, in addition to the block port, the only other active port on the switch is the port designated as the root port. I will lower the cost of this root port to 18 by issuing the spanning a tree cost 18 interface by configuration mode command. So here configure terminal on the interface of uh, F04. Simply type this command spanning a tree cost and change it to 18 and then hit enter. But unfortunately back the tracer does not support this command but this is how you you do it you know if you want to change this from being a blocking it to change the cost to 18. Now why did spanning a tree change the previously blocked port to a designated port and block the port that was designated port on the other switch. The STP looks at the path cost first the port with the lower path cost will always be preferred over a port with the higher path cost. When we change this on switch 1, this will be preferred because this is 18. Now I, I need to remove this, just simply the upper arrow key on your keyboard and just type no and this will take it. But this is if this command was uh, been supported on uh, packet tracer but unfortunately it's not supported but if you are using a different software you can use this command by lowering the path. Now I will run the show command show spanning a tree to verify that STP has reset the port on the non root switches back to the original port settings which actually we didn't do anything here because it wasn't supported and uh, it's usually in switches like this when you change it it needs to take almost 30 seconds. Now I'll ask this question what is port priority in spanning a tray? STP port priority loop occurs in a network topology. Spanning a tree can use the port priority value for the ports to decide which port must be put in forwarding state, the port priority is only used to determine the, to the topology if the loop in the network cannot be resolved using bridge IDs or path cost. And what is the default value for spanning tree port priority? The default spanning tree port priority value is 128. Now, if port costs are equal, 
Then, spanning a tree compares BIDs. If the BIDs are equal, then the port priorities are used to break the tie. The default port priority is 128. STP aggregates the port priorities with the port number to break ties. Lower values are always preferred. Next, I will activate redundant pass to each switch to observe how STP selects port using the port priority. I will activate uh, ports F01 and F03 on the switches. On all the switches. Switch 1. Configure terminal, interface range, F01, F03, no shot. Enable, configure terminal, interface range, F01, F03, no shot. And on switch 3, I'll minimize it a little bit, or shrink it. Sorry, enable, configure terminal, interface range, F01, and F03, no shot. Now, we need to wait 30 seconds for STP to complete the port transition process. Then, I will issue the command show spanning a tree on the non-root switches. We will notice that the root port has moved to the lower number port link to the root switch and blocked the previous root port. Now, on switch 1, I will run this command show spanning 3. Here, as you can see, we have on the port F01, this is the root, or is the root port, and we have the three ports, 2, 3, and 4, are alternate. On switch 2, show spanning 3. Now, this is our root bridge, and all the ports are in a forwarding state and designated ports and on switch 3 show spanning tree we have the root port on F01 and it is in forwarding state we have alternate port F02 and 2, 4, 3 and 4 are in designated ports now, uh, what port did STP select as the root port on each non-root switch? The non-root switch, we have the two switches, which is a switch 1 and switch 3. Switch 1, again, uh, F01 is the root port, and on switch 3, we have F01 is the root port. Now, why did STP select these ports as the root port on these switches? As we know, the default port value of the port is 128. Therefore, STP used the port number to break the tie. It selected the lower port number as the root port. Like here on switch 1, on this side, we have these two ports, uh, F0, 1, and 2. The lower port number is F0, 1. That's why F0, 1 was elected as the root port. On switch 3, we have here the ports again, the 1 and 2. The lower port number is F01, that's why F01 was elected as the root and block the other one. Now, 
After a root bridge has been selected, what is the first value STP uses to determine port selection? It was the path cost. It selected the path with the lower accumulated cost. And if the first value is equal on the two ports, what is the next value that STP uses to determine port selection? It's the bridge ID by selecting the lower value. And if both values are equal on the two ports, what is the next value that STP uses to determine port selection? It will be an aggregation of the port priority and the port number. The lower value is preferred. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, suggestions, something you didn't understand, please write me and I'll explain it. It is something really simple. Uh, just read the definitions and the explanation I included in the walkthrough documents. And uh, I'll be waiting for your comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Have a nice day.